what's up guys, back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to talk to you about dynamic memory allocation. And dynamic memory allocation simply means that you're going to be allocating the memory on the heap rather than the stack. So inside of your memory you have, or your RAM I guess you might call it, you have different sections of memory. The stack and the heap are among those sections, and there's two or three other sections. Um, one of the sections is for static and global variables, but then also you have the stack, which is going to be for all of your different functions, um, the different local variables inside those functions, like the parameters, the return variable. It's going to hold all of that information for those functions, and it's going to be able to call those functions and have all, the, all those function-related details. But then you go to the heap, which is also called the free store, and the heap is basically um, a giant, or not a giant chunk of memory, it's a giant chunk of memory compared to the stack at least, because the stack is, um, I guess it depends on the system and whatever, but the stack is usually, I believe, default. Um, it's a one megabyte, you could say, um, and of course that very much depends. But the heap is bigger than one megabyte, and even more importantly, the heap can be resized. So if you find yourself needing more memory, your heap is able to grow, which is kind of cool, but the stack cannot grow. So if you go beyond the size of the stack, you're going to get something called stack overflow. So if you find yourself using a lot of memory, you may want to use the heap. You want to allocate your all of your memory on the heap rather not all of your memory, but your new memory on the heap rather than the stack. And something also about the stack. So before the program is even compiled, the compiler needs to know all of the different variables you're going to be creating. It also needs to know the sizes of the arrays. So the reason it needs to know that is because, again, the stack is a limited size, so it needs to know ahead of time how big um, all the memory it needs to allocate is, right? So, um, like, I might have, I think I showed you this last episode, but if you were to declare an array, the array has to be declared with a constant value. Um, it cannot be declared with a mutable value, a value that can change. But let's say you find yourself in a situation in which you don't know the size of your array, the size of the array can change. So let's say you make a program where you're going to ask the user how many names they want to store. Um, you don't know, you can't predict the, you know, what the person is going to enter into the console, right? How many names they want to store, right? So you can't code that into a variable. So for example, if you were going to do int size and then do cn size and then create an array from that size like uh, names, so string, string names size, you can't pass in size because um, size is a mutable variable, it's not a constant variable, so you can see that you get a variable size object that may not be initialized. So if I was to change this to a constant, we can see that that error goes away. Of course, you get a different error this time because you can't input onto a constant variable, so it's a little complicated, right? But the whole point is that how are you supposed to be able to allocate an array of a certain size if you don't know ahead of time before the program is even compiled what the size will be? So that the way you can avoid that, you know, since you need to know the size ahead of time for regular arrays, um, um, the way you can avoid that is with dynamic memory allocation, and that means that you're going to be dynamically allocating the memory upon the heap rather than the stack. Because again, to allocate stuff onto the stack, you need to know the exact size of the array, and for the, um, the heap, dynamic memory allocation, you do not need to know that. It can be random or whatever, not random, but you don't need to know before the program is compiled. So hopefully that all makes sense, a little bit of sense. Um, if that, That's just a little bit of all the information that comes with memory and sections of memory. So I'm going to leave a bunch of links in the description below so you can check out some more detailed resources. I haven't studied the topic in depth, so I can't give you all the, you know, the details, especially because it's a very complicated subject. So yeah, make sure you check out those resources if you're interested. But I did give you all of the, re the, uh, the basics you need to know for what we're going to be learning so far, so dynamic memory allocation. Like I said, just to reiterate, to dynamically um, allocate something means to allocate it upon the heap rather than the stack. So how do we dynamically mem um, allocate a variable? So this is how you statically allocate a variable. So you'd say integer age is equal to 18, right? And this is just a simple variable, you know, integer, right? And this is going to be allocated upon the stack because it's just a regular variable. But let's say that you want to dynamically allocate it for some reason. What you can do is you're going to need a pointer to the memory address of the allocated memory. And I'll explain that in a second. But you're going to need a pointer to that address, so it's going to be a pointer to an integer. And we'll call this um, dynamic age. It doesn't really matter what you call it. It can be anything. And then to basically, what on the right side here is where you, where you want to actually do the dynamic memory allocation. So you're going to use the keyword of new. So new integer. And what this will do is basically allocate four bytes, because it's an integer, 
inside of the heap. And then it's going to return, this thing right here is going to return the address of those four bytes that was just allocated. And that means that you're going to set that address that was returned equal to the pointer of dynamic age. So that means that this pointer here is going to point to that new dynamically allocated address upon the heap, which is pretty cool. But don't get confused, this is still a pointer here. And this pointer variable is going to still exist on the on the stack, right? But the value in which, at which it's pointing to is going to be upon the heap, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Just don't forget that. It's not really that important. But um, just keep in mind that any variable that you declare right here, you know, remember a pointer is a variable. Any variable that you declare is going to be on the stack. But if you dynamically allocate it with the new keyword, the thing on the right side that is being allocated here will be allocated on the heap. But the address that you're putting here is going to be put into this pointer, which is on the stack, right? Anyway, so that's not too important, like I said, but it's good to know stuff like that. And um, yeah, so the reason we need this pointer here is because what what's the point of allocating something if you can't access it, right? So we're allocating four bytes of memory for this integer here, but if we don't store it somewhere, the address of where it's being created, if we don't store it, then we'll have no way to access it in any way or even manipulate it, right? There's no point. So we need to point to that memory uh, location address. So since this is a regular pointer, just like normal, we can do stuff with it. So we can alter it. So dynamic age is equal to 99. So if they're 99 years old, we could do that. And then we can even print it out. And of course, right here, we're dereferencing it just like a normal pointer. They're all, it's pretty much the exact same thing, except that of course, you just need to know that you're um, dynamically allocating it upon the heap. That's the only difference, but it's still a normal pointer at the end of the day. Of the day. So let's say I'm going to print this out. All we got to do, all we got to do is dereference it. So uh, dereference dynamic age, and then we'll run this and let's see what we get. So we should get 99 because we're setting the dynamic age to 99, which will basically access the memory address at this point here, here, get the value at that location, and then set the integer equal to 99. And then we're going to print it out. Pretty simple. And there we go. We get a 99. But what if we were to print out the value before we set it? So right here, we're allocating the space for an integer, but we're not setting any initial value. We're just making the space. So what would happen if we printed it out right in between? So C out dynamic age in line. Let's see what happens. So in this case, we get a random value here, and this is just a garbage value. So I believe I told you about garbage values um, earlier in these pointer videos. So a garbage value is just whatever value happens to be at that memory address at the time of this um, execution here. So since we didn't initialize this integer here after um, allocating the space, it's just going to be able to print out, or it's just going to print out whatever is at that address um, before allocating it. So whatever is there is going to be printed out. If there's nothing there, maybe you just get something even more random. I don't know. But the point is, is that you really want to, you want to set it to something before you print it out anyway in the first place. But yeah, but uh, you may ask, is there an easier way to set it without having to make a whole new statement? And there actually is. You could do this. You could do new integer inside the parentheses here and provide the integer that you want to set it to initially. So 167. So then if we were to, wait, if I were to go like that. So then if I were to print it out, we should say C167, and then we're going to reassign it, and then it should print out 99. And let's see. And boom, yeah, we get 167 and 99. So that's just another way you can uh, initialize a new dynamically allocated variable. And of course, you don't have to do, with, do this with integers. You can do it with any type. So let's say we have a name. So string name, of course, it's a pointer to a string since we're going to be dynamically allocating the string. So new string. And we can leave it like that if we want to. Or we can give it an initial value. So Cody Simpson. And then we can print it out. So name. Make sure it's, make sure it's not just name by itself, but you want to dereference name because of course it's a pointer. So as you can see here, we're just building upon what we already learned and then we're just introducing a new topic, right? Easy peasy. So Cody Simpson, perfect. That's exactly what we expected. So that is how you allocate new dynamically uh, allocated memory, right? Um, that's really important. But what if you want to, what if you're done using that dynamically allocated memory? What if you're done with this uh, string here? You don't want to use it anymore or you don't need it anymore. Um, it's important that whenever you're done using dynamically allocated memory that you delete it or free up the space um, there. So or deallocate it is what you could say. So the way you do that is instead of the new keyword, use the delete keyword. So delete and then provide the pointer that you want to delete um, the uh, deallocate the memory from. So what this will do here is basically take this pointer here. And if it's a piece of dynamically allocated memory at that address, it's going to basically deallocate it, free it up for the program. 
uh, to be used. So that that's all that should do. So let's run this here, and we should not get anything special. We shouldn't even print out anything. Yeah, nothing printed out. Good. So um, yeah. So what, just to recap, what we're doing here is we're um, allocating a new string here. So it's gonna um, basically allocate whatever space is required for this string of Cody Simpson, and then it's gonna set that address of whatever that is to name. And then when we're done, we want to delete the space allocated for name. And the same thing if we have an integer here, we would want to delete the space um, that was allocated for that integer. So what this will do is basically free up that space of memory. And then later in the program, if we need more dynamically allocated memory, it will use that space if it needs it. So yeah, that's also important. The reason, some other reasons why you might want to free up memory is let's say you're using a lot of memory, you're starting to fill up all of the memory that you have um, available for the heap. So um, if you fill up the entire heap, then your program will crash. That's not a good thing. So what you want to do is just free up that unused memory over time so that you won't run out of memory. Hopefully you don't run out of memory. And also you have something called memory leaks, which is basically the same thing. It's basically just dynamically allocated memory that has never been deallocated. Maybe you forgot or maybe you did it wrong because there's a different way of deallocating memory depending on what you do, and you'll see that later on, we'll learn how to allocate uh, arrays, so that will be important and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so that's how you delete um, dynamically allo dynamic, yeah, dynamically allocated memory. But um, let's see what happens if we use um, dynamic memory inside of a function. I'm gonna show you something kind of important that you may overlook. So let's say we want to make a function called print name. It's not going to accept anything. It's not going to return anything. All it's going to do is allocate a name like it's doing down here, basically. But we're going to allocate a string here. Um, and what we want to do is just call this grandpa name. And grandpa name is going to be dynamically allocated. So new string, not capital S. This is not Java. So new string. And we're going to give it an initial value of grandpa Jenkins. There we go. And what we want to do is just output Hello, sir. Hello, sir. My name is Grandpa Name in line. Don't forget to dereference this because it's a pointer. And uh, yeah, so let's see what happens. Let's delete all this. Let's see what happens when we run this function here. So all we're doing here, just to look at it, is just we're going to allocate, uh, dy dynamically allocate on upon the heap. We're going to allocate a string. It's going to have the value of Grandpa Jenkins. And we're going to set that memory address equal to this pointer here so we can keep track of it. And then we're going to print it out. Pretty simple. So we should get into the console, hello, sir, my name is Grandpa Jenkins. Hello, sir, my name is Grandpa Jenkins. There we go. But the potential problem that we have here, if you might have noticed, we did not deallocate Grandpa. So we need to do that. So we uh, delete Grandpa name. So um, the reason I showed you this example here is because what if we don't have this here? What, me what that means is that since it's a local variable here, so this pointer here is a variable, of course, and since it's a local variable, um, whenever this function is done running, we're no longer going to have access to this variable here. It's going to be deleted, but at the same time, this dynamic memory is still going to exist inside of the heap. So even though this pointer here is deleted with the memory address stored, the value is still going to be allocated in the heap. So that's a problem. So since um, we have not deleted it at the end of the function call, Basically, we're just leaving the memory unallocated and unaccessible. So there's no way we can access that memory um, anymore to delete it or even change it or anything like that. So what you've done is introduced a really bad memory leak into your program because, I mean, it's it's bad if you you know forget, but it's even bad if you can't even access the memory in the first place to deallocate it. But don't freak out or anything just because the program is not deallocating its memory. Let's say you have a really bad memory leak. Of course, this is going to be bad for your program because you're not going to have freed up memory when you should. But whenever the program ends, then that memory will be freed up for other programs. So don't get too concerned. It's not going to affect your whole computer. It's just going to affect the life of your program um, and stuff like that. So, But it's still important. Don't overlook the issue. Memory leaks are bad because um, let's, say you're, yeah, let's say you're calling this function here like thousands of times and you don't realize that you're, you're not deleting or deallocating that grandpa name then you're gonna have that memory leak you know, multiplied many times over, thousands of times, right? As many times as you call it. So hopefully that all makes sense. Just don't forget to deallocate that space inside of the scope of the function 
or if you don't delete it inside the scope of the function you could also return a pointer to that um, allocated memory and then deallocate it somewhere else let's say you have it return this pointer here then you could take that pointer and, and then deallocate it inside of the main here if you call it inside the main and we'll get into that later next episode or the episode after next episode where we look at returning pointers so stay tuned for that but yeah, hopefully that really long explanation made sense just to um, be aware of those potential issues and so the last thing I want to teach you this episode is called something is something called dangling pointers so let's say you have a pointer to something um, let's make one here so let's call it uh, integer or actually we'll make a double here so double a pointer to a double score and we're going to dynamically allocate a score here so a new double and we're going to give a initial value of 75.0 so let's say that for some reason we're done using this score here we're done messing around with it and we go ahead and delete it so what that does of course is deallocates the memory the eight bytes that we have here it frees it up inside the heap for the program to use it another way in another time whatever right it's going to deallocate the space but uh, this pointer here is still going to exist and it's still going to point to that same memory address so even though that memory has still been freed inside of the heap the pointer is still going to point to the same memory address which is problematic that's a dangling pointer because if we were to do something like uh, score is equal to 100 right that uh, memory is not allocated anymore there's no double there anymore there's not eight bytes allocated at that memory address anymore so if we were to do this here that's problematic because it's no longer pointing to that allocated memory it's deallocated right there's nothing to mess with right hopefully that makes sense so basically what I'm trying to say is what you want to do is after you delete that memory you want to take the pointer to that um, memory and set it to null right so score is equal to null PTR or if you don't want to set it to null you can then just immediately set it to some other value like maybe a new double so if you were to so if you were to create this double here and then deallocate it once you're done using it you either need to reassign the pointer to some other memory address or set it to null right so just to put it simply, a dangling pointer is a pointer that points to memory that is no longer accessible since it has been freed up. Technically, you can access it and mess around with it, but that's not a good idea. You want to mess around with stuff that has been allocated for you and for your program, okay? All right, so that's about it for this episode. I taught you about the concepts of the stack and the heap. The stack is basically what you've been using this entire time until now, which is to statically create variables. So just normal variables are going to be made upon the stack. But the stack is kind of limited because it's uh, limited, to a, limited to a certain size, like maybe one megabyte or something like that. But if you go over that size, you're going to get you're going to get something called stack overflow, which is problematic, right? So you can use a bigger chunk of memory called the heap, which is also expandable. And the heap is great because you can dynamically allocate memory and then deallocate it once you're done using it and do a bunch of cool things. So I taught you how to dynamically allocate memory and then how to, to delete that memory once you're done. I also taught you how to do or the concept of memory leaks and then I also taught you finally how to work with or how um, dangling pointers work okay so hopefully all of that made a little bit of sense um, like I said I'll leave a bunch of links in the description below so you can see uh, more information on how the sections of memory work and all that stuff and uh, if you have any questions about what I showed you today you can hop into our discord server here and we have a big discord server with um, a bunch of channels and a thousand people inside of it almost and you can ask questions here if you need help you can also leave suggestions if you want to. There's a link for this in the description below, so make sure you check that out. And then also, finally, we have a link to the code for this episode. It has a bunch of comments, as you can see, next to it. So if you didn't understand anything I explained in this episode, if I went too fast or if I didn't explain it good enough, then maybe this could help you out. And uh, also, if you forget anything, you can come back to this link without having to re-watch re the video. So I would suggest you open this link here and then bookmark all of this code so you can come back to it in case you need it. So yeah, that's about it for all that. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like if you want to see more. Subscribe and peace.